Welcome to the Collab Back with Julie Roginski, where we take Twitter back from the trolls, and I'd say puppets are in the troll family. The no puppets. No puppets. It's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, you're that the, the Russians. Hmm. And speaking of that, recently in the Washington Post, there was an op ed that made an interesting insight, writing, quote, Trump prefers the company of dictators who flatter him to Democrats who treat him as an equal. And I tweeted indeed to that because, well, indeed. Well, many on Twitter did not agree, like John, who tweeted, Democrats don't treat anyone as equals. Are you completely insane? And wasn't it Obama that cozied up to Castro? You've lost your marbles. To which I replied, someone should learn the difference between Democrats with a capital D and Democrats with a lowercase d. Then feel free to opine on my previous tweet as you wish. Because the difference here is this, taking the Democratic Party that is in this country out of this equation, what this op-ed was about, had anybody on Twitter bothered to read it, was about the fact that the president went to Saudi Arabia where he was feted by autocrats and dictators, which the Saudi royal family surely is, by General Sisi of Egypt, an autocrat and a dictator, which he surely is. But he complimented Sisi's shoes and he did the weird orb thing with the Saudis and generally was treated like the king that he thinks he is. Then he goes to Europe sees democratically elected leaders with a small d, Democrats, and trashes them, trashes Angela Merkel, one of our hugest allies in Western Europe, uh, throws some shade at Macron, the French, new French president, and otherwise treats our biggest and greatest allies in the European Union as though they're our enemies. It, it really makes no sense underscoring the point that the way to Donald Trump's heart is to appeal to his autocratic and I would say monarchical tendencies, and not to the fact that he also is the democratically small d, duly elected leader of the world's greatest democracy. Then there were tweets like Chuck from Love Connection, quote, believe it or not, Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin were both Jewish. I was shocked to find most of the original Soviet communists were Jewish. That's not necessarily true, but okay, I guess the guy from Love Connection knows better. Or Jim's, isn't there evidence that Lenin's maternal grandfather was Jewish? Um, you know, I don't want to accuse anybody of anti-Semitism, but you have to understand these are the kinds of tropes that have been used for generations to oppress people who are Jews in the former Soviet Union. By the way, Lenin's grandfather, there's some, some evidence that maybe he was Jewish, but that he converted to Christianity a long time before Lenin's birth. Look, the reality is this. Communism was an atheistic enterprise. None of these people believed in any kind of God, Jewish, Christian, Hindu, Muslim. This was an ideology that oppressed millions upon millions upon millions of people and was responsible for their deaths. So stop with the tropes because you're, whether you know it or not, Chuck Woolery and others who parrot this kind of behavior, echoing the worst anti-Semitic tropes that were used to oppress people for generations across the former Soviet Union. So in summation, don't be a puppet or a troll. Or do, and I'll clap back at you. I'm Julie Roginski with Fox News.